here's the problem or not the problem because this little beauty counts to almost 600 pages why not let a random generator decide that's not a negative thing oh well, hello welcome to my channel uh my name is Manon. for those of you who've been here before welcome back for those of you who are new hello welcome my name is Manon, like i said and um, on my channel we do talk about books I do some challenges sometimes, reading vlogs, and here and there I'll talk about certain characters, themes, book series that I feel like we should discuss. Today we have a sort of talking about books and a challenge because a while ago I got a, how do you call it, a gift card, thank you, a gift card for books and I was like well you can buy tons of books, you have a giant TBR, you should totally buy some books from that but like you know what's the fun in it you know why not let a random generator decide what you should read next so that's what i did i let a random generator decide and one of them is the atlas six by olive e. blake um the other one is homegoing by yagyashi and the next one is the adventures of aki march by saul bellow i will be honest these two are, were already on my TBR, so I was actually kind of happy that the random generator chose them. And this one, I had no idea, I didn't know, and then I got it. Uh, because a random generator told me, so let's start off with this one, because I've just finished it. It placed itself in during the Great Depression, a so little before, slightly after, and you follow the lives of, you guessed it, Augie March who um, grows in Chicago's like suburb. You just, it's basically a story of his life. So kind of memoir, but then in fiction, but then based in the real world. There are a lot of them. I will be honest, it's not necessarily a book that I would have picked up just because I'm not always as interested in memoirs or these types of stories, especially because this is, very, is a very American book. It only hooks by Chicago. He is a sailor for a while. I didn't hate it. So let's just start off with that. I think because this is a genre that I'm not necessarily into, it took me a while to get through it. Um, and here's the thing. It wasn't terribly written at all. It was like really well written. And I think that's why I was even able to finish it because this little beauty counts to almost 600 pages. <laughs> and I think I got into a hundred, a little over hundred and I was like, okay. I have so much more to go. Do I even want to? And I think it was that point where I was like, okay, this is not the book for me, but if you're into those types of stories, it is a really good one. It's really well written, the story is engaging, um, and it is also a slow paced book. I think the main theme of the book is just kind of find your destiny or the thing that you want to do in life because what you notice a lot is that he has a lot of people around them where they're just like I want to like make an empire or I want to start a business or I want to be really good at this one subject or I want to really make something of myself and he's very much like well I just want to like get by do my thing learn you know and he's very smart and very interested and he is also written down as um, very attractive and very charming as well. So a lot of people try to help him, so like you can really make something of yourself, you have all the elements, and he's kind of like, I just don't really know what I love, I don't know what I want, I'm just gonna do whatever comes on my path. If I come across something great, if I don't, I don't. Would I have picked up this book without a random generator? Probably not. I think for me this wasn't the best read. Like I said, that's all really much taste. Because outside of that, it was really well written, really well done. And I will definitely be looking at other work from Saul Bellow, probably smaller works, um, just see what he has done. Um, because like I said, I really did enjoy his writing style and the stories that he told. Then, I'll talk about Homegoing by Yagiyashi. Um, I finished this a while ago. I also made a reading vlog about it when I did like 12 hour readathon. Um, so I also didn't talk a little bit more in depth about this. The story itself follows two sisters. Um, in the Gold Coast, everyone was like, so, like 
when we're talking about colonialism and slave trade, where one um, marries with a slave trader and the other one is sold into slavery and gets shipped off to the US. So I initially thought like you just follow their story and that's it and how their lives very diverge. But that's not really the case because their story is actually very short. Um, and then you follow their children and the children of the children and up until present day. So you kind of follow the differences that it brings in their generations and how much of an effect that has in like something that was decided 200 years ago. Um, so that was very interesting to see the effects, the struggles that each one of them had to deal with. So you get a snapshot so you understand what they're going through, you understand their main struggles, uh, but there is no like in-depth um, discussion about the characters themselves. I didn't mind, I felt that I liked that. Um, I think that made it a very medium paced book and also very readable and I feel like her points still came across. Highly recommend, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. So that was a really good choice from my random generator. Then the last one, the Atlas Six, known for, like I said, the must read TikTok sensation. It was on my TBR, it had been recommended to me by friends, and I just hadn't gone around to it. And I feel, just out of everything that you need to know about this book, I feel like this is a very quintessential TikTok book. That's not a negative thing, I just want to make some points clear uh, before I'm gonna like dive into this book and what I think of it. TikTok books to me are something that sometimes, especially ones that get recommended every time, I feel like people build up this giant idea of what it is. And I think I've read now like a few of them. Uh, for example, I also like read The Love Hypothesis recently. And the thing is, with TikTok books, which I've realized, that if you go into them not really expecting anything, I just want a simple, neutral, easy story, then that is what you get. Like, I enjoyed her life hypothesis, but I can totally understand if you expect some new Pride and Prejudice giant enemies to love her storyline. It wasn't it. But if that's not what you were expecting, like I did, then I really enjoyed it. And I think this is very similar. I think I was overhyped on it in the sense that they didn't make it a bad book. I liked the idea of the story. I liked a lot of the characters and the way I think that this is a book where I felt like I could chase what she wanted to do and how she wanted to make it a very epic story and it's kind of like I can understand I can almost reach it but just like it doesn't quite grab it and it seemed also frustrating because I feel like it is a fun way of doing it. it's like dark academia fighting for your life mystery intrigue so the Atlas 6 is about six people, six students, um, who are part, are asked to be students for the Alexandrian library, which we all think had faded away during the bright fires in history, but it didn't. They saved it and it is guarded by people with magical powers, which a small percentage of the world population has. Naturally, this, these six students all have magical abilities. On its own it sounds so interesting so I was pretty much sold on it just from the back cover and like for example this is a book that really did fall into the genres that I usually read. Here's the problem or not the problem but I think here she did she uses six POVs for every student and there's also like a seven in there shortly. Um, so she needs to tell like six seven stories of each person individually and then the great storyline on its own. And that is, I think, where you kind of miss it because she has to tell so much about every person. You kind of never super connect with every single one. Definitely not every single one because some of them she spends a lot of time on and some characters she doesn't really spend that much time on or maybe later in stages and even then it's kind of like I still don't really know what you mean or what you want. I felt so bad because I was like I really wanted to love this and I just was slightly underwhelmed but I think that's also partially because I was so overhyped on it and I think that's something like we see a lot of TikTok books is that we get so overhyped on certain stories that if we eventually do read it we expect this epic book that will blow us away and will be better than anything we've ever read and that just doesn't really happen. I, there probably will be um, 
exceptions to the rule, but I think as a majority we can say that that just isn't the case. Does that mean that they're terrible reads? No. Does that mean that you can enjoy them? Absolutely not. I still enjoy a lot of those books. But I think that what we should do, if you say like, I want to read a TikTok book, but I don't want to be disappointed, just go into it neutrally. I also like when you grade it, I was like, it's just right in the middle. Like it's not probably not one of the worst books you've ever read, or at least not in my case. And it won't be like one of the all time best I've ever read. And that's okay. Sometimes we just want an easy, fun read. The sequel to this comes out this autumn, I think, maybe September, October, I think I saw, which is part of a publisher. So she's signed with a publisher for the sequel um, because this came out as an independent book. And I think if you say, like, I haven't read it yet, I think I would suggest waiting with reading it until the sequel comes out because I think in the sequel a lot more will be made sense of all the other characters. I think they will smooth it out a little bit more in the sense that some students are kind of confused of what's going on and I think if you can read it maybe in one go it will make a lot more sense. So I'm like super excited for that. So those were the three recommended to me by a random generator which I think, to be honest, I kind of liked the idea. Obviously I was very lucky because it also recommended two out of the three that were already on my TBR, so naturally I was already interested in them. Um, so if you are looking for like, I want to try a new genre or I just don't know what to do or what to read, it is definitely an idea and a fun thing to do. We're going back to regular scheduling of all the books that I still want to read, which is like, well, mine are like, I don't know, 500,000 maybe. Um, so we're gonna be booked and busy. Booked and busy. Anyways, besides the terrible jokes, I hope you guys have a good week. This is the end of the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said at the beginning, if you want to see more of the shenanigans going on, um, hit the subscribe button, like and comment. I'd love to get in touch with you guys. And up until then, up until next week, happy reading. Mm -hmm.